Hey, hello everyone. I am just testing this sound. The you can hear me well, and also you can see well the image. Can you let me know if you if someone is there? Hey, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Can you let me know if the sound is OK? Can you hear me? Hey, hello. Can you? OK, great. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen. It's probably I will just for one minute, and then we, we are ready to, to start. Yeah, thank you, Bobby. Yes, we are just waiting for just three minutes because still it's not uh, midday, so we're still waiting a little bit more before we start. Yeah, thank you everyone for joining us. We are just waiting for uh, a couple of minutes before the start. So I think we have people from, yeah, Miguel from Lisbon. I don't know, uh, I would love to ask if some of you already have been in, in Morocco already already how how many of you know have been i don't know in marrakech or uh fest taking picture so if you can put on the in the chat Yeah, so Kat, yes, yeah, good. Now you will know, or oh, I will show you more picture, and you will know more about the, the experience here in Morocco. And Kira, yes, long time, probably you have been here for kind of long time ago you visit, probably will be time to visit again.
Okay, so we will start now. So thank you everyone for joining us today. And this morning I will be sharing with you about street photography in, in Morocco. Uh, my name is Fernando Vaca Flores and I'm a Chilean photographer from, uh, from Chile. I live here in Morocco since 2013. So at the end of this year will be eight year that I live in here and taking picture in, in Morocco. And during, during this talk, I will be sharing with you a little bit my experience also, uh, taking picture with uh, a portrait of people in, in different cities here in Morocco. I will share with you some tips and uh, trick that can be helpful for you. And probably all these tips uh, will be not just for Moroccan context, but also probably for uh, where you live. So uh, I will be start sharing with you a little bit about uh, culture uh, in Morocco. Like in, you can see in this picture from the Jamel Fana Square. Uh, Morocco in general is a very uh, touristic place. Many people come to, to Morocco as one of the main income in the country. So for example, this uh, Jamel Fana Square in Marrakech is one of the, I think I read is one of the, most visited square in whole Africa. So normally about culture, Morocco, uh, always a lot of people visit Morocco. Uh, so normally the Moroccan people, they don't like a lot, like uh, they take picture of them because of that, because many tourists came here without asking for permission. You just come and take picture of them and they move on without engaging in conversation. So talking about photography, I think in the beginning, we'll sharing with you about kind of cultural advice or tips that probably will be help, will be help you when you are coming here. So for example, uh, in the beginning for me, it was very difficult in, uh, to approach people because of when uh, the people uh, saw me with the camera, they don't like it that. Even sometimes children of uh, probably two, three years old already, when they see my camera, they start to say, la, 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 la. That's meaning in Arabic, like, no. Uh, so already since child, they, they know if they don't like camera. But once I was reading in an article from The Guardian, and uh, was about uh, the experience of five photographers from Magnum magazine. And normally they are really experienced photographer. And even for them was a little bit difficult to take picture here in Morocco. So I will share a little bit you so with you so you can understand about this cultural part that's important when you come to Morocco. For example, this uh, photographer, uh, Mark Power, is an American photographer and in his experience, he said, for myriad reasons, many people here do not like to be photographed and they often make that clear. I tend to set up, then watch and wait from a distance. So I become invisible after a while. Jim is more up close and this day no one was having it. In desperation, he started shooting a few frames of a horse that happened to be passing. Suddenly this guy appeared and goes, no, stop, my horse doesn't want to be photographed. So for example, even this for Mark, for this photographer, shooting from kind of long or long distance was a little bit difficult. And then from the other photographer, Jim Goldberg said, for me, the creative strategies I usually use did not work here. So uh, to understand better why is that here in, in Morocco, uh, with this group of photographers in the article also, they talk about two Moroccan ladies who were work, uh, helping this, uh, this group of photographer. And Leila, she said, everything is very complex here. When it's come to making a portrait of a woman, Le uh, said Leila, people are sick of photographers because of tourists being so intrusive. And Iman said, people are afraid about who will see the image, how it will be used. So have in mind when you are visiting Morocco, this thing probably, and they will, they will help you to understand sometimes probably if people don't like uh, that you take picture of them. So with these tips or thing in your mind that will help you understand why they react this way. They will help you probably to approach in a different way to engage in conversation with the locals. Um, Robert Thomas is a, a 
Spanish photographer, and he said, Marrakech is one of the most beautiful cities that I have visited to photograph, especially for street photography. And at the same time, one of the most difficult by far. I'm not the only one who say it. So you can see sometimes it could be difficult in, uh, a little bit difficult in, in Morocco. And there is, to finish this cultural part, uh, there is Bruno Barbe, he's a French born photographer in a, he born in Morocco. And he said, here, it is sometimes so difficult for a photographer to do his job that he must learn to merge into the world. Photos must either be taken swiftly with all the attendant risk or only after long period of infinite patience. Such was the price of these images. The memory of Morocco can only be captured with respect. Um, why I think it's important to, uh, that you can understand or think like in your mind to understand this cultural part, because that really will help you to, uh, the way you approach people, you engage in conversation. And for example, in my experience, even help me to, uh, to take in account the kind of gear or the camera that I'm using. So for example, before you come to Morocco, I think you will be good for you to have two things in mind, like which kind of camera you will use. And also for, try to look on the internet image that will help you for inspiration, also expectation that you will have, for example. With this will be probably more clear. Uh, as you can see in this image, that's uh, in the beginning when I started to take some picture in Morocco, I was using a, a big camera with a big lens. So it was obvious for, obvious for local, they say, oh, probably he's a, a professional photographer. So normally already was a barrier. Uh, one day this picture is a Zenith camera. This is the one with the, I learned photography. Uh, so it's a film camera and one day, I just went out, it had been a long time, I haven't taken picture with this camera. And when the people noticed it, that this was an old fashioned, or old camera, a field camera, they were very relaxed. And they were, they, they were more open uh, to that I can uh, approach to them. So for me, that was very interesting. So after that experience, I changed my camera and now um, I'm taking picture with the Fujifilm X-Pro1. I hope to upgrade it in during the summer to the Expo 3. But as you can see, it's a small camera, uh, look more kind of old fashioned or for the people here. So they think it even it's a film camera. So with that, that really, for me, like one barrier less, they are more open, they are more relaxed when I ask them for, uh, for pictures. So this is my gear normally. I use my camera Fujifilm Expo 1, uh, my main lens is the Fujinon 8 millimeters. And then sometime for portraits, I also use the 60 millimeters. And then also this small tripod Manfrotto. So sometimes when I find a nice place, I just sit there, I put my camera in the, in the, in the tri with the tripod and just wait for people coming to my, my frame. So that way also they don't notice me or I'm more, kind of is less stress for them. And also for inspiration or expectations. Uh, for example, I, in Chile, I come from, from a city called Valparaiso. One of the main photographers there is Sergio Larraín, also from, he used to uh, work for Magnum Magazine. And uh, as you can see this picture of Sergio Larraín, is quite, I can really see the inspiration from Henri Cartier-Bresson. So if before coming to Morocco also you uh, look on an internet for inspiration, which kind of picture you want to take, that will really help you because when we arrive to a new place, we have a lot of information. New, uh, could be another language, smells, they are different, food is different, colors are different. So all these things, they could be a little bit stressful in any place, new or new place, because it's new information. So you already in your mind, you have more, you're more ready to have, okay, that is the main idea, the thing I want to do, really help you with that. So I will give you some examples with Bruno Barbe that helped me in my, on my photography. For example, this from Fez, 
normal people, the normal, the daily life of them, how he he used the shadows in this picture, also shadows, but also how he framed, he used the the, the shadow to frame these two characters there, there. And one guy also who, one person who really inspired me or helped me, helped me was Claudio Bravo. He's a Chilean painter who used to live in Morocco and he passed away even he, uh, he's buried in, in Morocco. So for example, you can see these uh, images of him, the way he, he see or he used the light for he paint kind of the uh, portrait of people also that all the thing helped me for inspiration. So as you can see, sometime I have uh, some client coming here and they said to me, Fernando, I want, I want to focus on portrait. And they send me some examples. So already we know, I know with him, okay, which kind of picture and then we can improvise or be more open. Other people, they want to more architecture thing. So I think that will help you when you also come to Morocco or any place that you, you are thinking about to visit. And I think it's a good idea to check before on Google and check for which kind of thing you want to do. Or you want to try it, yeah. And now to the practical part. So what to look for when shooting on the streets. So I will share with you which kind of thing or tips or the way I'm, I, I'm looking or I'm shooting, which kind of picture I'm looking for when I am in the, walking on the streets or different cities here in Morocco. One thing they call juxtaposition. So it's the idea to the opposite thing to have an idea or two almost same idea, for example, same color, uh, they give you more enforced the idea that you want to capture. For example, in this picture for me was great. When I saw these two ladies sit there, for me was the idea of two different worlds. One local lady who is looking to the camera, uh, she's not really comfortable. The other lady from, opposite world, you can see the way they are dressing. And then she she don't even notice probably I took that picture. So that kind of this contrast, I really like it to, to look when I'm taking pictures. This guy who, or this person who was uh, at the barber with the symbol of in the door. So I really like it that. Uh, also this picture, uh, behind in the wall, you have this kind of graffiti of someone with a mask. So, and then I was waiting for someone with a, also passing with a mask. So also you have here the, this idea. And here, this, the color. When I saw the color of the car here at the, at the right of your screen, and then I saw the man coming in his bike with the gelava, or oh, his dress kind of the same color that the car. I, was, I wait for him there. So for me, it was, I really like it that the color are quite similar. So also you can play with that with color. And here you have the, you have the, uh, this, the head of that camel. And then you have the, in Arabic, they say kefta el jamel. That means kind of a camel meat. So also you have these two things for one idea. Also, when I uh, I am um, taking picture, I want to capture some gesture because they give a little bit of drama to your image. So as you can see here, probably this guy was not very happy, <laughs> but the expression of his, I really like it, the expression of his hand. Uh, here I was sitting there on the floor. I put the camera on my tripod and then because I really like the shape of the, that door and just I was waiting for people and then suddenly, this guy just came and then was looking to the camera. So also sometimes just uh, this gesture, who's like funny or something like that, a little bit goofy. So, but also be open for improvisation. Like this one, uh, it's a little bit not really sharp. I was just talking with someone in a, inside of a shop, I was talking and then as I was going outside, this guy just jumped in front of my lens. And then he said, hey, take a 
picture of me and then he did that face so quickly i just take the picture i didn't have time to uh uh check kind of my eyes so everything I just took the picture so but it's still this kind of thing be open for this reaction or gesture in this in this case in this picture i love the uh how the two sisters are walking with the big one is kind of with her hand in in the shoulder of her sister so i really like this gesture here with the shadow with the light inside of the medina market again this i really like it this the gate behind this man and i took probably three pictures of him as he was passing i really like it this when he put his hand in his face so this gesture i really like it Again, this guy in this man in Marrakech, sometimes when they ask for a portrait, they say, okay, no problem. And then they stop doing what they are doing and look to the camera. So in this case, I said to, I asked, no, oh, thank you, but please, you can keep going. You can keep uh, kind of uh, smoking and doing what you are doing. And then, so that way I can capture also this movement, this gesture and in, more, in a more natural way. Here again, this, man was uh, after probably i was talking with him for about five minutes with my camera sometimes when i approach people one thing i do i took my camera and put behind me so they don't see my camera so i engage in conversation with them i ask uh where they learn if they and normally they say no i learned that from my parent and then i'm i don't know the third or second generation i'm working on this thing so then as I'm engaged in this conversation and then I ask them, hey, by the way, can I take a picture of you? So and then already we have a, we have a, a, a build a bridge with them, a relationship. So really Morocco, that will help you with that. And they will be more relaxed. Uh, also with this man, and I took a couple of pictures of him and then we don't look at that to the camera, uh, but and then when I, I probably took two or three pictures of him and then I prefer the one who, this one that he was looking to the, to the camera. Also this picture I was with a group uh, in the Sahara Desert and then suddenly a family of Berber or Bedouin, they just came near to the camp uh, and I went out, I took my camera, I started to speak with them and as we were talking a little bit, I was, taking some picture and then I really like this one from this uh, girl, the way she put her hands. So I really like it. And then you can see in the background, these are uh, the animals. So it's the connection, this is a kind of a chepper also. So I really like it. And another thing I'm looking when I'm taking picture is the emotions or action. Uh, this picture I took it in Warsasad. Uh, these builders, oh, I just asked them if I couldn't take a picture. They say, oh yes, no problem. And then the way they just kind of they post, I really like it and really like it for the, the the expression of the main character here in the in the middle. So I really like it that. So for me, it's like the expression of I'll be a little bit of his tire or a uh, hard life. So this that gave me this uh, image. Image. This was during a very, very uh, hot day here in Warsasad and then probably was 40 degrees, something like that. And then the king was visiting the city. So it was a group of people like with a lot of instrument to give him the welcome, uh, to welcome the king. Uh, for the inauguration of something in the city. But sometimes they don't know exactly the time when the king is coming, so they wait for a lot of time. So it was a very hot day, so this guy was there probably just resting a little bit and really liked this expression or the emotion of be a little bit tired. This lady, again, this emotion of kind of uh, be tired a little bit, she just passed by my uh, the camera and then she just stopped a little bit to rest because she was holding something very heavy. So and then I really like the shape of the shadow with the, 
her hand on the wall. So it's a weird again. So normally I try to do that, look for nice, for me, I, like I, I found very interesting places. Uh, like in this case with the shadow with this place or uh, light and then I just stay there and wait for someone interesting coming. So probably sometimes I wait between 10 minutes and if I really like the place, sometimes I just wait even for 30 minutes. So this man, when uh, I saw he was smoking there, so I asked if we couldn't take a picture of him, he said in the beginning, he said, no, 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 I don't want to kind of my face. And I uh, explained to him, look, I know you will, I will not have your face. I really like the kind of your, just your finger uh, this way. So I took a picture and then I showed to him. So then he said, okay, I'm happy. So also sometimes if people say no, it's another way that you can, uh, but still taking a picture of someone. This in Sawira, uh, I really love the the shape of the palm tree in the in the wall and this guy sitting there. So sometimes, for example, I I what I do in this case, I saw this guy and probably I knew at this he will say no. So before I just took a picture in another part, I set up well my camera to check everything will be okay. So and then one day after set up the camera. I just I was walking, I turn to my right, take the picture and I keep going. So because that way I don't lose time to be there in front of him. He will not me and then taking a picture, check, I oh, know it's not the, uh, the good setup. I don't know, too much light or whatever. So in this case, I took, I tried before, set up my camera and then I walk uh, into the or near to the, this guy. Again, in, in Marrakech, I, I really like the, the way this guy was seated there. So all this emotion that you can find or the people like around in the, in the different Medinas. These two, these two ladies who were just chatting, saying hello and talking for probably four minutes. So and then I, I took a couple of pictures of them. Uh, in Morocco, also probably in the different cities, you will find some street musicians. So in this case, for example, they have a, like in, you will find in Europe probably or in, the, or in the state, they have a box. So you give just a coin and then, because it's their art, so they are playing on the street. So, uh, but in this case, if you also give a, a coin, you have the opportunity to take a picture of him. And I really like it because this, he was really on the mood, he kind of inspired playing his instrument. So. I really like it. Here again, I was just walking. I saw these three men, like with this joy of friendship and laughing at some random video they were watching on YouTube as they were having their breakfast. So I just approach and then ask them, hey, can I take a picture of you? Because I really like it. This, you, you're laughing, having a nice time. So, okay. And then again, they, start to look to the camera. I said, no, no, please keep watching the video you were watching. So, and then I took probably two or three pictures of them and then I showed to them. So also that is one thing they really like it when you showed and then they, you took the picture and then you show to them in the camera. That is a way of uh, also kind of respect them and then build this relationship. Yeah, this, uh, also these two old men who were playing, checkers uh, in the Medina. So yes, I, with them also, again, when I start to speak with them, I just put my, my camera behind me. So and then I just stood be, uh, next to them, watching what they were doing, uh, talking a little bit, saying that I live in here in Morocco. Uh, with the time also, I learned a little bit of Moroccan Arabic so I can speak with them in, the, in Moroccan Arabic. So, and then at the end, I asked, them if I couldn't take if I could take a picture so and then that was nice also this friendship this uh, this emotional of friendship also yes and this one this lady she was talking I really like more this picture because of the nice door but uh, I thought she's really relaxed so 
uh, this picture I took it in in Warsasat and normally this lady is holding his head in her head uh, some they they do uh, home bread so that is cheese uh, having there normally and then they sell it uh, but I really like it this kind of for me this the emotion of hard work on the among the woman here in Morocco again this is in Fez uh, if you go to Fez probably or you visit probably you will uh, you will go to to this place is the tannery of, uh, of Fez uh, normally they hear the the men they work the uh, the dyed or the leather so with that the leather of animal and then they create or they make some product like a bag, shoes, something like that. But the smell, like you can see this in the camera, but if you go to this place, the smell is very, very strong. So normally at the entry, they give you a little bit of mint. So then you can hold the mint in your near to your uh, nose because the smell is very, very strong. So here also is a beautiful place for some pictures. Again, in the Medina Fest, I was, I really liked this guy, and then I was just looking to him, and then this little girl passed near, uh, passed by with her mom, and then suddenly she ran back to give a, a coin. So and then quickly I took a picture of them. So for me, it gave me the emotion of uh, kind of kindness, generosity. Also the the this man with his cat, I really like it, this kind of kindness with the animal. And also sometimes light, light can be very, that can, or shadow, that can give you all the emotion. So it's no more the, the person who's passing by, but it's the atmosphere that you you found with the, uh, with the light. So in this case, I saw this uh, ray of light, and then I just wait for someone passing by. So I really like this the motion, the atmosphere that create these shadows and light. And that you will find a lot here in Morocco. So you need to be open for that. So again, here in Marrakech, you have in the middle of the Medina, or the souk, uh, all this, another kind of play of light. E again, shadows. Also, shadows is something you will want to use here as when you are taking pictures in Morocco. I really like the, the shadows behind the wall. And then I just was waiting for someone passing by my frame. And then I don't know if you can notice here in the hands of the guy have kind of a rope. So for me, the emotion is like something spooky, even death passing. So this is the motion that gave me this uh, image. Uh, also this I picture, I took it in first. Uh, from outside of, of a mosque. Like in Morocco, if you are not Muslim, you are not allowed to go into, into the mosque. I think the only mosque you can visit in the country is in Casablanca. That you pay like something like 10 euro for a tour inside, but in general in Morocco. So you, if you are not a Muslim, you are not allowed to go into the, the mosque. So this I took it, this picture I took it from outside. And I really like it, he was alone the sense of, I don't know, spirituality, faith. And also the geometry or composition. Uh, well, here you in Morocco, you will find a lot of things for, for make a beautiful composition. Uh, something I really always try to look for is triangles. For example, this shape, because tri triangles give you the sensation of, uh, of kind of balance. So that is why I really like. And then I, I was waiting for the background, I really like the background, and I was waiting for a lot of people passing by. I really like this one. The guy, he, how he was uh, looking to the camera. Again, in this picture, the sensation of this triangle that the, how he was. He's holding the, his bike and looking to the camera, so I, I really like it. And then also the perspective, how lines create, and then you can direct the vision of the people with the line, for example, with, in this case, this is Marrakech. 
Uh, again, this is in Warsasat. We have, um, this Warsasat is where I live. And then we have a small market uh, with, they sell a lot of uh, chicken, something like that. For example, here it's normal. You go to this kind of places and the chicken are alive. So you just ask for a big one, middle one, and you just come back in five minutes and they give you the chicken already was killed. And then, so it still is warm the back. Uh, in the beginning, that was weird, but now I know, okay, it's fresh. And uh, in this market also, I really like it there, sorry. This line to direct your vision. So, and then you can see the strong con contrast. So, and then I was waiting for someone uh, very colorful and then can uh, pop up from the image. And again, as I was waiting for this image because uh, some of the shopkeeper were kind of looking at me kind of, oh, one minute, two minutes. Hey, while you're waiting, you already in one or two minutes, you can take a picture, move on. So I, I took a picture, installed my tripod, took a picture, and then I showed to one of the shopkeeper I was talking and said, you know, this I want, but I now I need to wait for something like that. He said, ah, okay. So as I was explaining him what I want to do was, okay, he understood I was normal, kind of a weird guy waiting there. So also that helped because they understand that then at the end I showed to him the pictures. Oh no, it's very nice, very nice. And then yes, you build this uh, uh, bridge of very good relationship with them, with locals. Again, this, the lines that you can, and, in this picture, for example, you have on the top, this kind of, of the image, this uh, blue color, and then in the middle, this uh, orange. So you have the contrast also of uh, cold and warm color, but also with this line that you uh, direct your, your vision, kind of the perspective. And other kind of line, no straight line, but probably uh, curves. So that's also interesting. This is in uh, Warsasat, and I really like it, the shadow from this, all the thing here on the floor. And then was passing this lady, and then was kind of emptiness in just one person. I really like it here in, in Warsasat. But uh, how you, the line make you kind of direct your vision. Here in Chefchaouen, the, in the Blue City, again, this I was waiting, for, I wait probably for, uh, 20 minutes for this picture here. And then the line, how direct your uh, your vision, the movement of your eyes. And then I wait, probably take like five images of this guy, but I really like it how he was kind of holding or putting his hand in the wall. You sometimes lines can be kind of the eyes of people. They can direct kind of will give movement to the image. So, so in that case, as you can see this girl looking to her right, and then here on the right, you have this uh, this boy. So for me, the boy is in this case is the main character because she's giving, directing to you, your vision to that. So also uh, have in mind sometimes that where the people are looking because that give movement to your image. Here I was visiting some uh people or some berber people in the mountain uh in the south of morocco and then they were playing music and then i really like that as you can see the guy in this or the person in the at the center she he is looking to the right the person in at the right is looking to the left so then you have all this movement here so also the way the people the direction of their uh or their face also give movement give a balance to your image. So be aware also when you're taking picture even on this in the street. And then uh, also you can frame. In Morocco you have a lot of gate shape or something like that, like in this case in Casablanca. So that is something and then you can just sit there and wait for people passing by. Um, so this is something also you will you will use a lot if you visit uh, Morocco. For example, here in Marrakech, this uh, uh, shop full of uh, metal la uh, lamp. So, and then I asked for permission see if it couldn't go inside. And then I just was waiting from inside to take picture from outside. So already the lamp framed my character. 
here again in Marrakech with uh, this kind of gate. Mm -hmm. It's in black and white. And also this, uh, you will find this hiding place in, in the Medinas and then I really like it because here you have, okay, my frame and then you have this light here, so again frame, second frame, you have a third, a fourth, so you have like almost fifth frame into your frame. So also try to look for these kind of places in as you are taking picture outside. And then as you, because you are first there, you are waiting, normally the people, they don't say nothing in that case. So in general, sometimes yes, but in general, my experience is you are first in that place, they will say to you nothing. So that is, that's okay. This is in a city called Erfurt. Also you have a lot of frame into a frame and you can uh, play with shadows, contrast, light. And then it's just wait for someone passing by. Yeah, this is in Fez. I love this. If, for example, here, when you, when I'm taking picture, pictures, and then I'm, I know there is this spot of light here, for example, and I know someone will come into my, this is, or spot of light. Normally, always having count like here, the shadow of the two ladies in the floor, they are completely. Sometimes you take picture and you cut the shadow of them. So normally be aware that you wait until the whole uh, kind of character is into that spot, but also the shadow. So you don't cut it. You wait, so then you have two images. We will call them, like two images in the, the character there. Because if you cut, for example, it's no, the, your image don't have balance. So normally wait, wait for that, that they can come into the their character and the whole shadow is into the spot of light. Again, it was from inside to outside from a shop. Mm -hmm. Trying to frame, uh, do a frame with the, uh, some lamps here, market. And also blur. So for example, I found this thing very colorful uh, and I ask the shop, the shopkeeper because if I couldn't, because normally I am outside of his shop. So, and then again, if I stay for kind of five minutes, he will find it's quite weird. So again, I take a picture, I show to him one, I want to do that. I say, okay. So when you explain to him or to the people, they will be more open in general. Uh, so and then I was waiting for someone coming into this narrow place. It's also a different way that you can uh, try to frame your character to give more a picture more interesting. In Casablanca, this man is going to to pray to the mosque. This uh, kind of tower here, this is part of the of the mosque. So he's going to uh, going to pray. So you can see in his shoulder, he's uh, having a pray prayer mate. So. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, for example, here in Casablanca, as the name said, is you will find a lot of thing like white thing, but here in the Sawira, because it's a city near to the to the beach, so it's blue. So and it will change also, but again, you will try to look for this thing like frame, uh, shadows, these kind of things. And in this gate, I really like it. It's one of my, my place in Marrakesh where I go back over and over again. I really like this uh, gate because in the background you can see the the mosque, and you can see also the shadow. This guy, his this man with uh, on his scooter, and for example, this is from one side, and then the next picture is from the other side of the gate. It's not on the same day as you can see. It's not the same light, but is to just let you know. Sometimes in one place, try to work from different angles. No, just take from one part and then move on sometime and from, try from different angles. So this from picture from in, from inside and the other from outside. So, and also here, here I was inside of this shop. I really like the wall behind me with all these uh, um, 
kind of decoration basket. And then uh, I saw, uh, I think it was a boy running. So I thought, oh, it will be more interesting if I give uh, more time to my picture. In this case, it's one uh, 25th. And then if another person, another children is passing by running, it will be a little bit blur, so then it will be will give to the image to the picture more kind of more uh, character or or movement. So, and here was the the same idea in Marrakech. And then shadows. This is something really important. You need to like all the shape here, all this angle, triangle. You have one triangle, a lot of thing like that, and then the shape of the this woman uh, so shadows is something also you will uh, very interesting to look for here in, uh, in Morocco in general this man I really like it this double shadow you have this man going downstairs and then you have this the shadow of his hat here in the wall so I remember I was just walking in Chefchaouen in the uh, in the evening without my camera and then I saw that shadow so I said oh tomorrow I need to come back at the same time and then because I found it very interesting so then I have the opportunity to the next day come back and then wait for, for someone passing by because I really like it that uh, shadow so be alert when you are even in your home in your hometown see that you have possibility of go back over and over again different time of the day to the same place because sometimes during the morning one street probably is not very interesting but probably in the evening will be everything change. So sometimes in Morocco also try to do that to do that visit the same place, but in different uh, a different time during the day. Again, this is Nesawira. You have uh, kind of the shadow of the of the boy here in the wall. So make the image more interesting. And also with the shadows, you can just take out the kind of main character we would say and then just let the uh, imagination of people so because they know there's someone going with the, his bikes and then you in your in your mind you create the the character the same this lady with his her small chariots and then you can do this thing with the with shadow and then here for example you can see this uh and uh, the door behind so for example this is the same place so and then again the same concept like i i move a little bit in the same place for example here and here and the shadow the time change a little bit but and then also try to one place work it work the same place from different angles so and then could be you, you can even have different images completely more completely different so but try to do that I try to do that like when I'm in, in Morocco, so it could be good for you too. This is in, uh, in Warsasat, and then on the floor, this shape, like this shadow, I really like it. For me, this is very characteristic from the south of Morocco. So this shape, almost every house have that. So for me, that was interesting in this picture. And then I, 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 I was just waiting for someone interesting typical with the Moroccan uh, gelaba that we call that, uh, the way he's dressing with the gelaba, he was passing by. Back in Chepchawin in the blue city, also how we found this interesting uh, light or contrast and then just wait for uh, a person coming to your frame. This is Marrakech, so all this colorful thing how you will frame with the shadow. That is very interesting. For example, here, yes, it's the, it's the shadow who gives you the shape of a gate. And then I use that shadow to um, frame my, my character. Mm -hmm. More contrast here. I really like, you can, you can, you can just see some detail of this man so also. See, in, in Morocco, that is something you will you need to look for. Light is everything. Shadows is everything. So then that is something I'm very always looking for. Mirror, also images. 
And then we will pass probably to the last part is portrait. And then here I was taking a portrait of this, a portrait of this man, and then also kind of his frame into this uh, uh, window. In the beginning for me, I really was afraid of asking people for, uh, for permission to approach because already I thought they will say no. But uh, one I was reading from uh, this photographer, Eric Kim, uh, he have a really good, interesting tips for street photography. And he was saying street photography is 80% courage and 20% skill. You can agree with him or not, but I think uh, for street portrait, one thing you need to have courage. So one of the exercise he was given is the homework of the five yes and five no. That means you take your camera, you go outside, and then you ask for random people on the street that you found interesting if you can take a portrait of them. And you need to, five person need to say to you, or five people need to say to you yes and five no. And what is important probably that you accept this no, because sometimes when the people say, no, thank you, I don't want that you take a picture of me, we take we took that personally. We say, well, what is wrong with me? Uh, but it's not, sometimes people is like, probably they're afraid or they don't like that a random person take a picture of you and that's okay. So I will really recommend to do this, this exercise. For me, it was very helpful. So for example, for me, this probably is not the best picture, but for me, it was very important. This was one of my, the first images. I was just passed by. I saw this guy sit that way, watching television or the TV and then I thought oh, it was very nice, and then I got the courage to go uh, to go back and ask for for this photo. So and then yes, portraits of people, for example, just be kind with them, asking for permission, and you will see uh, uh, when you build this relationship, as they are really uh, they will keep doing what they are doing in a relaxed uh, way. So this face. So normally, yes, just ask for permission, or if they are doing something, you just start talking with them. Oh, that's very nice. Who teach you that? How you learning? And then you start to build that relationship or conversation. And then they feel, oh, wow, you are not here just for uh, taking my, my picture. You're also interested in me as a person. I think that's very important in, probably in general, but in Morocco even more. This in face another man. So, Show to them that you are interested in them as a person. Uh, this portrait, for example, this as you can see it's quite a religious person. Uh, we start to talk and then I ask if I couldn't take a portrait. He said to me, no. And then I say, what happened if you put your hand? I take a picture so you, I will not see your face. And then I can show you the image. If you don't like it, I will delete. So, and then I took the picture and then he said, oh no, I really like it. So even in this case, you can even not necessarily need to see his face or the face of the person, but in this case, I really like it with the, his hands there. And what's is that, more typical people. Yes, Marrakech, I will, because of time, I will be running a little bit with this last portrait, but as you can see, talking before is, will be open the door uh, with them. So more portrait from, uh, Marrakech. This is Mr. Vera. I really like the smile of this guy. And sometimes you will see this kind of more, we see kind of weird or random person. Like, like this one also. This was in Warsaw in the, in the street. And then, as you can see here, I have kind of Iwana or something like that in his head. So I really like it that. Take a picture of them. Uh, this had a dessert. So sometimes when I'm in tour, also I ask them for that. So, and then sometimes even moving me. This was I wasn't this had a dessert, and then obviously it was without a flash. So, but and then I take a kind of a portrait with rhythm as they were dancing and playing music. So, in Marrakech too. So this is from this really religious lady. And this is what I do normally when uh, I'm on tour with my client. 
I approach people sometimes. I am the one who asks for permission. But in general, so you can do that. Be kind with them. Be open. And show to them really you are not interesting just in the picture, but on them as a person. And build that conversation relationship. And that will change everything. So here also with people, with some clients. And then sometimes, like for, to finish, this is on the road. Sometimes when I'm traveling, is I love to take picture. This is a movement. I was in the car and taking picture uh, next to the road. So you can do that if you take always Uber something like that. This was from from the car as we were moving. Yeah. So this is something an idea for you. If you always take your the metro, you can take picture. You know, to your work as you're in the metro or Uber. So. So you can see more here, these ladies. So this is just an idea probably also for you. That also was on the road, these children with the cameras and just finished. Uh, or oh, I just went out to, from, the, uh, from the car to take that picture. And probably this is some important phrase if you want to say hi, show kindness to people like salam alaikum, something like that, say hi to them. Uh, that could be sometime I also try to teach them when I have some client to, these even small phrases like build this cultural gap. And to finish, this is a phrase for me is very important from Alfred, Alfred Einstein said, it's more important to click with people than to click the shutter. So this is I really try to do here. This is my motto, click with people. Not just in Morocco, wherever I am, I try to click with people, but on a personal level. And that probably also will be good for you, for anyone anywhere where we are. So thank you very much for uh, coming and be with me or listen to this talk uh, about Morocco. I hope you find it very interesting. And then I will be 50% of discount for the second person on my Marrakech one day photo walk if you want to come. So and then this is the code that you need to give. And then also we'll have some uh, question we have time for some questions i have one said from cat it said does this work the same for female photographers i know they think of women differently than in the uk uh, to be honest i think uh, women will be will have more opportunities than men to take some pictures uh, here because like for me it's so difficult many of my portraits you saw they're from men it's quite difficult for me as a man to take a picture of a woman. Uh, for example, if I want my wife, sometimes she asks, or oh, I am with her, so I'm not alone. So that will be good. Uh, but I think for female, to be honest, I think you can have more uh, could you can have more opportunities for take picture of men and women. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there is a, another question. No, I think it's no. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're welcome, Kat. So I don't know if someone have um, uh, another question. Why did you use such a high ISO for those outside shots from the car? Because I, I haven't, I haven't put attention on that. So normally, because it's very, very bright, uh, you have a lot of light outside. So normally, yes, I can have a ISO like. Uh, 300 so this is just because I haven't checked it there is no uh, yes that was a mistake for me but normally you can use a less uh, ISO what's more ISO I don't know if some, another question about that or you see we have a few minutes so and then again yes if you want to uh, you can go to click trip and then to check more of this uh some of my some of my tour and thank you for also to uh, click trip and camera work for organize this uh, uh, series of talks so really thank you for for this opportunity to talk and share with people or work and then yes 
Alison asked, uh, the best time of the year to go. Uh, I will say like probably in March, April, and then the end of September, October, and the beginning of uh, November. Because if no, it could be very cold or very warm. So. Oh, thank you, darling, uh, darling, for enjoy the presentation. Thank you, David. I'm really glad you enjoyed the all the these tips and trick. I hope, and as I said to you in the beginning, many of these uh, uh, tips you can use even where you live. So. Mm -hmm. So still, we have some other time or more minutes for more question. So probably we'll just go back a little bit if we go what uh, some time, for example, this, yes, yeah, some asked me for, for example, this ISO 100, 1000, sorry. Yes, it was my, my mistake normally. Yeah, I haven't checked that. It was, I think, probably more putting attention to the exposure. So that have a um, a high exposure. So, for example, here and then I I put down a little bit to five hundred. So, but normally from the car. So I really enjoy that. I have a folder with a called on the road. So and then I have a lot of picture I took when as I was uh, in the car because I'm not driving. So I take that opportunity. And then so you can do that. Like if you're often taking Uber, you can have an album from my Uber, something like that. And you can take that opportunity or in, at the, in the metro, when if you always use the metro or train, that could be a time also for you to take some pictures. So this lady, for example, they're all of them sit there because they come from different village for the souk or market, the fruit and veg that we call. So, and then they wait there. So, and then the, I mean, even come and, take them and then they go back to their uh, village. So you say they are just sitting there and waiting. And then you can see just men, they are just women. There are no men, they're always this a little bit separate. And then here the eye, so I, I saw that and then it put like in 500. And this also, I saw these ladies from the cars and then we pass them and then we stop. And then I was just waiting for them to, pass because when I, I really find interesting this, uh, the color of the, um, their dress and everything. So I don't know if there is a, another question again. Yes, Pauline, I hope, yes, that I'm really glad that this presentation make you try to come back again. So. You're more than welcome. So, still we have probably two minutes, something like that, and then we can, you have more question about, or something about, a question specific about some, one of my picture. Uh, for post-processing the images, now I'm using a program called, uh, on one photo row. So, so I really like it, that program called on one photo row. This is the one I'm using now. Yes, I really like this camera. It's very like my, the X-Pro, they're very light, uh, more discreet, so really will really recommend. So you can try them probably now the X-Pro one, you can, buy uh, like in second hand will be cheaper. So normally I'm here in Morocco, sometimes technology could be expensive. So when I go to, to France uh, to visit some family members there, I try to buy technology, but because of COVID we have been almost two years in Morocco. So probably this summer I will try to go and test and see if I go for the export three. But I really, I recommend the, this line. But even the Expo One is still, I think, today is very good. And then, and the lens, I really like fixed lenses. So I really recommend it, Julia.
Oh, you're welcome. Okay, so I think we are almost arriving to the end of our time. Probably you have someone, someone else have a, another question? Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. I am really glad you enjoyed the presentation and thank you for coming and thank you again for ClickTrip and Camera World for this opportunity. Bye-bye, thank you.